What lessons have you taken from Virgin and the for-profit sector into the non-profit initiatives you've been involved in? You know, as an entrepreneur, you look at um, problems maybe di differently than, say, a social worker can look at them. Um, you know, partly through one's entrepreneurial skills, but partly just you know, a social worker doesn't have the financial clout or um, the public profile to you know pick up the phone and get things done. Um, and you also maybe look at things slightly differently than a politician can look at, look at things because they don't have you know the, just the entrepreneurial skill that goes with years of you know, seeing problems, building businesses. Tonight you're uh, recognizing two doctors uh, at your public-private clinic in South Africa. Can you talk to me a little bit about the health clinic and what the public-private health clinic means? We, live, we have a, a, a game reserve in, in an area of about 100,000 people um, and about 25,000 of those 100,000 people uh, were HIV positive um, and, um, and pe people were dying very quickly of um, AIDS. Um, and they didn't have a clinic. Um, and so we set up a, a clinic um, with uh, PEPFAR and UNAIDS um, uh, and with uh, Anglo-American um, coal. Um, and uh, so you know, we had the two private companies, Virgin and Anglo-American, um, PEPFAR and, and, and USAIDS. You know, it, it's been the perfect, perfect partnership. Business leaders like Ted Turner have talked about turning a profit while actually doing good. What do you think about that and how does that fit into uh, Virgin and your model of uh, philanthropy? Yeah, I, th I think that generally speaking I, w I would uh, keep the two things separate. So, but, um, but businesses themselves ought to be you know, forces for good in, 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 every, in every way that they they're, they're run, you know, run they're, if possible to run them ethically, um, to run them in an environmentally friendly way, um, and to make sure that you know, the, the, the businesses themselves maybe look after their local communities, um, and you know, by by doing good, uh, the staff who work for the businesses will, will be that will be prouder of the businesses they're working for. It's not just a money making machine and they'll, they'll work harder. You've been involved in the Global Drugs Commission. Uh, can you talk a little bit about your work there? I, I was asked to become a commissioner of the Global Drugs Commission by President Cardozo, who, who was um, president of Brazil. Um, and he's pulled together a group of commissioners, Kofi Annan, um, you know, George Schultz from America, um, and a lot of ex-heads of uh, South American countries. Um, to do a, an, an examination of whether the war on drugs is working, and the end, the end result of the commission's work is, you know, the war on drugs is not working, um, and there needs to be a rethink. Um, and the rethink the commission have proposed is that instead of uh, treating people like criminals who take drugs, um, that it should be realised that this is a health problem that people need to be helped. Um, and that in countries where they've taken this approach, Portugal being the best example, um, they've managed to halve the number of heroin addicts, halve the number of people on, 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 um, on, on heavy drugs, uh, and the amount of marijuana use uh, is the least of any, any country in Europe. Um, so if we could replicate what's happening in Portugal in the rest of the world, and in particular America, uh, you would get rid of you know, about three quarters of the prison populations, save the country a, a ton of money, um, you know, save a lot of misery caused in families by throwing, throwing people into prison unnecessarily. Uh, and then you could use that money to uh, put it into uh, you know, drug clinics, into hospitals, into schools, into you know, building roads, um, and, um, and make it much more productive for society.